this thing on? Okay, so uh, we're going to do a little Wednesday waffle. It's going to be uh, possibly a bit before Wednesday, but it won't matter once this video is dropped. It doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm just doing my intro and my sound of uh, a guy who is from Kentucky and loves Kentucky fried chicken. So, um, I was just musing about some topics and I thought, why not film it? I might be shadow banned, I might have gimps on my case, but maybe they can use it, I don't mind. Uh, I thought a good film with Joaquin Phoenix in mind making, hang on, let me check this one. Yeah. Uh, a good film with, like, uh, Joaquin Phoenix in mind. At the moment, he's doing um, uh, Napoleon, and they're covering Napoleon's campaign in Russia specifically, I believe. Um, I mean, it'd be very hard to do, to do the whole thing, so it, it's probably a good idea just to focus on one campaign. I mean, there was a film about the whole Battle of Waterloo, and it could have gone on longer. It was already long, similar to Gettysburg. The film on Gettysburg was long, it could have been longer and my tangents are as well. So basically, um, I just thought like a lot of people seem to be, for whatever reason, like researching and they find like Caesar's, uh, Julius Caesar, who is one of the most successful military commanders who later became an emperor of ancient Rome, the Roman Empire, SPQR. And um, he had a very interesting life, like, um, it says before he was, he turned 30 and by that age he hadn't really conquered anyone and it said that he wept whilst reading a book about Alexander the Great who by 30 had conquered like, you know, Persian King Darius taken half his land off him or something and like off into the Middle East somewhere. And, it said that uh, Caesar was uh, actually wept <laughs> through a bitter sort of <laughs> lack of achieving things. <clears throat> so they went, obviously, went on his campaign through Gaul and uh, Germany. But what's interesting actually is in a lot of films, if there's like warrior type men in it, they're very, f uh, they might be like fierce at fighting, um, which is accurate. and. But the other thing is, it's like if um, you got like two boxers facing one another. Um, once the fight's over, they both got bloodied up, you know, bent nose, whatever. Uh, but they they hug each other and love them. But Caesar, when he won battles, would basically sort of be. <coughs> um, Ah, uh, I, I came, I saw, I conquered. Take him away. Uh, yeah, it said that there's actually a very persistent Celt tribal leader that I think it was Alicia. Big battle, but the, the Celts uh, lost in the end. It was a big battle, it was like a Waterloo or a Gettysburg at that time. And it said that when Caesar was uh, presented with the commander of the uh, the the huge uh, Gaul uh, conglomerate, all these tribes are joined together. Um, I, see, I, I've got to research, but people who know will know what I'm talking about. The guy was taken and hung at Caesar's pleasure. Let's see. Let's just check it. Caesar. Yeah, a, a confederation of Gallic tribes united under the leader of Vercingetorix. So let's find the exact quote. So it says Vercingetorix was kept as a prisoner for the next six years until he was paraded through Rome and ceremonially garroted at the two, uh, I don't know how you pronounce probably two, Tulia, Tulianum, Tulianum in 46 BC. Yes, Caesar was born around the time of the birth of Christ. Captives were 
given to the Roman soldiers as part of the spoils of war, apart from the AD and Arverni tribes whom he hoped to win over. Oh, so, so he didn't actually kill him immediately, but he was basically treated with disdain. He wasn't given respect. He wasn't really acknowledged. And that's something that's a bit different because nowadays, uh, uh, even in medieval times, they had like more honor and things. Uh, this Caesar guy was just ruthless. He went through whole town cities, burnt everyone, to, everything and everyone to the ground in some cases. He's a real old world tyrant. But at the same time, especially in those days, he would have been admired uh, for what he did. Um, also, another interesting thing, if you make a film along those lines, is um, I know the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest, where the Romans were actually ambushed, and it was the first time a whole legion actually just routed and slaughtered you know, there were actually survivors to the battle, but most of them didn't make it. I think maybe like a hundred tired men made it back to Rome. Uh, the rest were all slaughtered. The, rest, the other couple of thousand were, were all slaughtered. Never happened before. But anyway, uh, a few years after, an emperor called... Uh, not emperor. I forget who the emperor was at the time, but a general called... Germanicus, who was um, uh, named after the German area, uh, became, uh, they sent him out there to get revenge and they had to re recover um, some Roman battle standards as well. I think there were like nine or ten taken and they got all but two back, something like that. But this was over like a decade of different battles and wars. And um, what was interesting is that the thing that kicked all that off, where a Roman legion were attacked by the Swabi, uh, with um, there was a guy who actually uh, betrayed the uh, the Romans, who was ethnically German. An e an ethnic German with a large sort of typically barbarian frame however he had joined the Romans just trying to find the facts good job yeah Germanicus came after um, Ar Arminius that was the yeah, Arminius, who was actually had had worked for the Romans, but he betrayed them because I think he was an ethnic German. So um, his loyalty really was he kept it quiet, but his loyalty was actually to uh, the tribes where he was born. Um, terrible defeat, which is an interesting thing. I know it's already been done in a, a, a film with Michael Fassbender, uh, Centurion. Yeah which is good, but then the rest of the film is a bit weak. But it's interesting that this Germanicus actually went on a campaign of revenge as well. And that was the other thing that could make the film interesting. It could be quite brutal because um, I was reading a book on um, the battle um, and it says that most uh, of the Romans that, uh, when they saw that there's no hope left, uh, the officers and a lot of the others basically um, got another man to put a sword down his spine and kill him because uh, it was more of an honour thing you, you, you don't give have the dishonour of having the enemy take you prisoner people, people, men in those days thought differently today life wasn't important it was more about bravado and you know being this uber war machine type person but some did surrender, obviously. It's probably human nature in some situations where you've got no way out. But apparently the German tribes actually took the, the Romans that surrendered and basically pinned them to trees and chopped them to bits whilst pinned to the tree. 
I don't know all the details much, the gory details, but I'm sure they're out there. I think it was listed in the book, you know, I'm just speaking from memory here. But I'm thinking that could make a good war film. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the only issue is, uh, for me, is the woke propaganda. If they didn't do it quite so much, because for every lack of that kind of thing, it shows men that are basically bestial, because the Romans were pagan, and the Celts they fought were also pagan, but they had different beliefs, but they were, they were systems of war and, and brutality, they didn't they probably wouldn't be called in any way, shape or form, civilized by armies of today standard, um, apart from maybe ISIS. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just interesting to think that, you know, you get Caesar and that, um, great man, great thinker, but uh, totally ruthless, really, can't a truth be told. Um, it could make an interesting film, you could focus on one battle or another, uh, you could focus on the, the torture scenes would be a bit like Braveheart torture scenes, it'd be interesting, uh, and you know, an adult can cope with it, you know? it's not real, it's just a film, but it shows you how old you were with violence, um, and yeah, all sorts in there, it might, might make a good film, as I said, it would have to be like no political stuff really. Just put it as it as the history tells us. Um, there are overseas factions you could throw in there if you needed to, but I think something like that is good for Hollywood or whatever modern filmmakers because there's been like a dearth of films that people want to watch. Um, and as far as a war film goes, that could be a winner. So just my opinion. Anyway, I'm gonna end. Cheers, guys. See you later.